For some time now, I've been wanting to make a series of videos where I compare my wood stoves one against the other. So I thought, what a better way to start the series off than with the IKEA Hobo Stove and the Luxata Wood Gas Stove. If you're interested in seeing how these two stoves compare, keep watching. Okay, before we start comparing the two stoves against each other, I thought I would establish the criteria that I'm going to use. So to begin with, I'm going to break it down into two categories. First, the pros and cons. And the pros and cons will include things like the cost, the compactness, the weight of them, as well as the versatility. And then we'll get into the performance of the two stoves. And that will include things such as how quickly will the stoves bring two cups of water to a boil. I know that's a bit arbitrary, but you have to have some standard which the, you can use to compare them. But I'm also going to be looking at how long does that fuel last? How long will it take, or how much ash is left over after the fuel? So those are the basic criteria, and we'll see what else we can come up with as we go along. Now, let's take a look at the two stoves we're comparing today. All right, I have the two stoves set up here on my cement block side by side so that you can get an idea of what they look like when they're in their stuff sacks. Because that is one of the factors we're comparing is the compactness of the two of them when you're carrying them in your, in your kit bag. So to begin with, let's take a look at the... Luxata wood gas stove. Now I do have a separate video on this stove and I'll link it up in the show notes above here over my shoulder. I think you can see where I'm pointing. So you'll see a card come up which will link you back to the video where I test this stove. And I've done a number of tests and videos on this stove comparing it against other stoves such as the Solo Titan which is another wood gas stove of similar design. So this one obviously wins the compactness in your bag uh, comparison. So uh, we'll open that up in a second. But before I do, yes, this is more compact, but I do have the weights of them. So again, here is the IKEA uh, stove setup that I have in this stuff sack. And the uh, Luxata wood gas stove comes in at 1 pound 11 ounces or 778 grams as you see it in this bag. So one pound, 11 ounces. The IKEA setup that I have comes in at one pound, nine ounces, or 714 grams. So there's a couple of variables here. One is whatever you're going to use for your IKEA setup is going to make a difference in the weight. So different pots and different ways of uh, making the stove and different attachments are going to make a difference. But they're very close in weight, although the IKEA has a bit of an advantage. Now, let's take a look at what's inside. So to start with, let's set up the Luxata put the stuff sack aside and this is the way I have mine packed and ready to go so I have the MSR Seagull uh, little pot here this is the 775 milliliter version great little pot I like it I mean 775 is is just enough I would like it to be a little bit bigger but then I would be giving up some of the compactness that goes along with this stove because they seem to be designed to fit together perfectly so inside Set the pot aside. You have your base ring. You have your burn chamber, which has a drop down plate. And you have your pot support and feed. So there it is, fully assembled. And this is how I would use it one on top of the other. And it's a, it's a good setup. I really enjoy using this. I don't use it all the time, mostly because uh, I end up wanting to use a slightly larger pot. So this is not big. It's big enough for a solo. And, uh, you know, it works very well. But uh, sometimes I just want a larger pot. So that's why I don't carry this all the time. So we're going to move that to the side for a minute. Let's get my IKEA setup out. Lid. Stove. And pot. Now, to finish setting up the IKEA stove, I have the conduit legs that I've modified this one to have. Makes for a more stable, wider base. Pot stands made from an aluminum one inch stock. And my pot that goes on top. Now, side by side, there's going to be one obvious difference between the two of them, and that is the pot side. Now, before anybody cries foul, the reason I'm using these two pots instead of pots of similar size is because this is the way I pack them when I go into the woods. This is the uh, 
you know, the most compact way to, for me to pack this. Now, I do have different pots that go with my IKEA stoves, depending on what stove I'm going to be using. But uh, this is the one I wanted to compare for you today. So I am going to put the same amount of water in each of these pots, two, or two cups or 500 mils of water. And I don't think that the displacement or the, you know, the spare room in each of the pot is going to make that big a difference in performance. But we'll see. Maybe it will. But this is the way I pack them. This is the way I carry them. So that's the way I wanted to compare them today. All right, let's put those aside. What else can we say about these two stoves? Let's do a cost comparison. The IKEA can cost almost nothing. It really depends on the availability and your ingenuity. So the availability is, can you find IKEA utensil strainers? Now I pick mine up between a dollar and two dollars, depending on how they've been uh, uh, priced at Value Village, our local thrift store. And uh, you know, I bring them home. Now the other things that cost me, sometimes I can get the aluminum bars for free, but the conduits do cost me a little bit of money, very little. You get quite a few in a package. And I do have a video on the making of an IKEA hobo stove. So there's a little bit of work involved in it, but eventually, ultimately, this is a much less expensive stove. Let's call it a $5 stove and give it a generous uh, price, $5. What about the Luxata wood gas stove? Well, this is also known to be a very inexpensive stove for most people. I think I paid $15 for this when I first purchased this. These are Canadian prices, of course. And I bought this one on eBay. I see them now ranging $20 to $25. So if you shop around, sometimes you can get them for the lesser price. And, uh, you know, it's still a little bit more money, but it's a lot less than a lot of other wood stoves. Uh, go. You can see size-wise, comparing the two sizes when they're in their assembled, they're very close in size. However, when you look at them, that's not the full story. What you need to consider is how much wood each of them will hold. And there's a huge difference in, in, the, in that. The IKEA will hold much more wood. It not only has a larger diameter burn chamber, but a much taller burn chamber, because re in reality, the whole thing is a burn chamber. However, the Luxata has a smaller burn chamber. It's a little bit narrower in diameter, and it's also, as you can see from the bottom, the burn chamber doesn't reach all the way to the ground. And of course, that's just part of the design. So I can't get as, bit, as much wood into the Luxata as I can into the IKEA. Today, we're gonna to be putting exactly the same amount of wood in each of them, because that's the only way we can do a fair test. All right, let's move on to loading these two up and we will see how they perform. Oh, one more thing, when I talked about versatility, uh, both stoves have about the same versatility. I'm going to give versatility edge to the IKEA for a couple of reasons. One, I can use longer pieces of wood, which means they have to do less processing when I go to load the stove up. And two, as you can see on this one, I've cut a feed port on the front here. And there's different ways that can be done. But the feed port allows me to use even longer sticks than would normally fit inside of the burn chamber. So I can continue to feed in longer sticks that way. So versatility I'm going to give to the IKEA. All right, now let's load these st uh, stoves up for the test. Okay, so I have the two stoves loaded with the fuel that I'm going to be using today, and it is split hardwood, kiln dried hardwood that I have here at home. I thought it was the best fuel to use for this comparison. No, it's not sticks from the woods, but this is a, a variable that I can control by using the same wood. I've got it cut to the same size, and you're going to see that looks like it's going to make a huge difference, and it may make a difference in these stoves, but it is part of the test, and I have the same weight. So I'm going to be using 7.6 ounces exactly exactly 7.6 ounces of wood exactly in both stoves that's also 218 grams so 218 grams or 7.6 ounces of hardwood in the Luxada pretty much fills the chamber and it's a short stick let me pull one out to show you it's only about two and a half three inches long and the reason I'm using short wood like this is because for peak efficiency the wood has to be burning below the level of the secondary jets, the vents right at the top of the stove. So you can start out with more wood in your Luxata, or any wood gas stove for that matter, but you're not going to reach peak efficiency until the burning gets down below. You'll also notice that they're use, I'm using a top-down burn. This is known as T-LUD, T-L-U-D, 
top lit up draft burning style and the reason I'm using this is because again this is the most efficient way to use a wood gas stove that's how they were designed to work not to say you can't start a fire in the bottom and burn it up but if you're looking for the most efficient and longest burn uh, this is the way that you should be using your stove so that's what I'm going to do to give the best advantage I can to the Luxada now when it comes to the IKEA bit of a different story I'm using the same amount of wood but you can see how much difference there is in the in the chamber for spare room left over quite a bit not only is there room left inside of the chamber but there's also a lot of height left inside of the chamber uh, yeah this is where it gets a little tricky comparing stoves against the other I can use much more fuel inside the IKEA stove than I can in the Luxada but how do you compare them if you don't use the same amount of fuel so that's what I'm going to be doing today is using the same amount of fuel in each of them again top-down burn I do find that pretty much any stove benefits from that top-down burn this is going to be a little hard to get the IKEA lit for that reason for the shorter sticks but I think we can manage it now to light these I'm going to be using homemade fire starters these are wax impregnated cause uh, makeup pads that's what they are cotton makeup pads impregnated with wax with a little bit more wax on the inside folded over into a little uh, looks like a little dumpling or pierogi I guess and I'm going to rip those open light them put them in the center and then I'm going to be putting some wood chips on top of it this is wood chips from carving projects that I have around when I make spoons and the like around the house so enough talking let's get this thing started you know when you do a top-down burn you may be able to get away with just using the fire starter itself but uh, quite often you have to build a little bit of a fire on top of your fuel to get them to get it lit I think my lighter's out of fuel. Oh, here we go. Can't see in the daylight here. Nope, not lit yet. Expose a bit more of the wax. Or the cotton, I should say. There we go. That was better. So it will take a little bit of time to get these fires established and once or during that I'll, I'll cut away and bring it back once the fire is established before I put the water on for a boil let's see if I can't get this one lit now beautiful day here in Halifax making it a little hard for me to see what's happening here in the sunlight All right, that's better. And we'll lay that one in here. Except I think I put it out. No, nope, still going. All right, so it looks as if the fire starters are getting lit. I'll add some wood chips to these. Being careful not to put the fire starters out. Now the reason I build you build a fire like this on top of a top-down burn is because you need a little bit of a fire going. It starts to draw the air up from the bottom, and at the same time, as the fuel or the starter kindling on top is lit, it starts to drop coals down inside, which will light the main body of fuel. All right, that looks like it might be enough to get them going. And while the fire is still relatively small get the crossbars on top for the IKEA and the feed port on top for the Luxada and I'm going to give them a couple of minutes to really get established and then we'll put the water on and that's when I'll bring you back okay both stoves are burning well right now I did have to add a little windscreen around them just to well to, you know give them the best chance each but also there's a bit of a breeze that comes up here in my backyard I can see clearly inside the Luxada that the gasification is taking place very nice 
It's a very clean burn. Uh, very. Actually, I don't see any smoke at all right now. Of course, that might be a little hard to see in the daylight. Uh, so it's cleaning, burning very cleanly as it's designed to do with full gasification taking place. And inside of the IKEA, the wood is burning very quickly, actually quite a bit more quickly than it is inside of the Luxata at this point. Interestingly, I can see gasification taking place there where air is being drawn in through the feed holes all the way around. Okay, before I run out of fuel, let's get some water on each of these stoves. All right, so two cups of water on top of the IKEA and two cups of water on top of the Luxata. Now I'm going to start the timer and the timer is not so much to see just how quickly each of the stoves brings it to a boil as it is as a comparison. See which one will bring it to a boil first and give a bit of an idea. So that'll take a minute. There we go. I will right, we'll just watch that for a few seconds. So my first impressions are is that the IKEA lit and came to a, a good burn quicker than the, the Luxata did. But that's because I think the extra space that is inside of it, the, there's so much room inside of there left over that the wood is well spaced apart, making for a lot more airflow through the wood. And uh, that may, my, my, I suspect, may also lead to the fuel being consumed much faster. Hopefully not before I get the water to a boil. So that means it may come to a boil quicker, or if it does in fact come to a boil, but not last as long. All right, let's, I'll let the video run, or sorry, I won't let the video run. I will turn the camera off, and when they come to a boil, that's when I'll bring it back. Okay. I admittedly, I was caught a little bit off guard here uh, before I even had a chance to really get ready to do this or set the camera up, I checked and the IKEA water was boiling hard, right around two minutes. And just behind it, probably closer to two and a half minutes, is the Luxata wood gas stove. Very close in comparison for time, but I will say that the IKEA had it beat by at least 30 seconds, maybe even a minute. I, I didn't get the exact time because it happened so much faster than I would have expected. Okay, I'm going to take the water off, and now we're just going to wait and see how long it takes for these things to burn down to ash, and I will uh, keep an eye on that. Okay, I'm trying to create a shadow over the two stoves so you can get a better idea of what's taking place inside right now. Clearly, the IKEA consumed its wood much faster than did the Luxata. Uh, there's still some wood burning down inside. There's still some active flame, but I don't think that's going to last much longer. It's been just over 12 minutes since I first lit the fire starter in each of them. So they uh, are both burned out very well, but there's a lot of fuel left to burn in the Luxata, and it is burning beautifully. I mean, that is exactly what you look for in a wood gas stove. All the jets are firing beautifully. There's a nice steady flame coming up through and zero smoke. I mean, that's what these are all about. The most efficient burn. I'm impressed with the IKEA, but certainly the Luxata has the better burn. It is going to burn longer and uh, it's going to burn less smoky. All right, what we're going to do now is just wait until they go to ash or at least until the IKEA goes to ash. And I want to see just how much ash is left in the bottom of each of these stoves. So it may take a few minutes before that occurs. So when it does, I'll bring it back and then we'll see what we can draw, what conclusions we can draw from this test. Okay, it's been a little over 25 minutes since I first lit the stoves. And I'm looking down inside the IKEA. I see the ash that's left. There's heat there, but not a real significant amount. However, there's still a lot of active coals inside of the Luxata. If I were to throw some fuel in there now, it would light right up. One of the things I wanted to see was just the efficiency in terms of how much ash is left. Rather than wait to the very end until the both stoves are cold, I think I can get a good idea now. I'm going to show you the IKEA. If I can do this without burning myself, see how much was left in there. Not a lot, but there is some in there. And I was looking to see if there was going to be a lot of ash underneath it. Now, there does not appear to be, but in truth, that could have been the breeze that blew that away. So any ash that might have fallen through the holes on the bottom uh, must have been blown away because it's not there now. Now let's have a look at 
the uh, Luxata. By the way, you can hold one of these stoves from the very, very bottom. It's hot, but it's not too hot. So I should hopefully, maybe I'll uh, remove the pot stand. You'll get a better see inside. So you can see there's still some active coals in there. Not a lot, but again, they're, they're active. They're still providing heat, and they would ignite any new fuel that was put inside. Ashes, again, very, very little or none. I was a little surprised because in past tests, I've had ashes fall through both of these onto the concrete. I mean, it's not significant, but there is some that falls through. I suspect uh, the fact that this is extremely dry, kiln dried hardwood made, uh, made for a, a very clean burn. Okay, I'm going to let these two stoves cool off, and then we'll uh, see what conclusions we can come to about this test. Okay, so what conclusions can I draw about these two, two stoves being compared one against the other? Well, I think we have to go back to the criteria I established for this test to begin with. So I looked at it from the pro-con point of view. From the pro-con point of view, the IKEA is a much less expensive stove. Not that the Elixata is very expensive, because it's not. It's still very reasonable, very affordable stove to buy, and, you know, it's still a good price. The IKEA wins in the cost category. How about compactness? Well, compactness the, has to go to the Luxata. When you pack it down, especially inside of that little MSR 775 uh, stowaway pot, this is a much more compact stove. This is not overly bulky, but you know you have to be efficient with your space. Either this goes inside of your pot, or a pot goes inside of this, or maybe you're going to store some things inside of this when it's uh, empty so that you can uh, make, maximize your efficiency in packing. So, this one is a little bit more compact, this one is a little larger. Weight. The Luxada is an ounce or two heavier than the, than the IKEA, but that's going to be very dependent on how you build your IKEA out. What you use for pot supports, what you use for legs on the bottom, what you use for pot in general. That will make a difference in how the, the weight compares. Okay, let's look at it from an efficiency point of view. Well. There's one thing that the IKEA has going for it over the Lexata, and that is the room inside of the stove. How much fuel can I actually get inside of this, and how long will it burn? Using the exact same amount of fuel, now I know, someone's going to make a comment, that wasn't a fair test, and in truth, it wasn't. You can do much more with the IKEA in terms of fuel than you can with the Lexata, but I had to have some kind of variable that I can control, so that's how I chose to control the variable on fuel, exact same size, exact same weight. So yeah, okay, the IKEA lit up faster, it brought water to a boil faster, and it went to ash and, to, and burnt out faster. Still, the Luxata performed very well. It took a little longer to light and come to a full efficient burn with wood gasification taking place, but once it did, it was a steady performer. There was a steady flame, hot, that was smoke-free for the entire time that it stayed lit. And it stayed lit much longer than did the IKEA. So efficiency depends on how you look at it. If you want to bring your water to a boil faster, maybe the IKEA is a bit faster than the Luxata. Not a lot, but a few minutes faster. Uh, if you're looking for it in terms of wood, in terms of fuel capacity, and how you can feed the stove, a little bit more vis versatility in the IKEA than there is in the Luxata, because you do have to process your fuel down a little bit smaller. At the end, ash-wise, very hard to say. They both look to be about the same. I think there was probably a little less ash in the Lixada wood gasification stove, probably because it just burns so efficiently, but there wasn't much left inside of the IKEA either, so I'm going to have to call them pretty close to a draw there. Okay, the conclusion is that both of these stoves work extremely well. It's don't feel, I don't want anybody to feel handicapped because all they can afford or what they have is their IKEA. Uh, you know, I love the stove. I have since I first built them. I still consider them one of the better stoves that you can use and own at any cost. At the same time, I still like my Luxata. I like wood gasification stove. The only thing I don't like about them is the processing of wood to get the best out of them. Okay, those are those two stoves compared. I have a, quite a collection of stoves in my uh, room downstairs, and I'm going to open it up to you. What would you like to see me compare one against the other? I have a few ideas, and I'll be making videos on those as I go along, but if you look back through my videos, you've got an idea pretty much of all the stoves that I own, except a few that you haven't seen yet. So if you'd like to see a couple compared against each other, if I own them, I will compare them. If I can get them at a reasonable cost, or if somebody wants to send me one, then I'll compare them against some of the stoves that I already have. That's what I have for you right now. 
And until we see each other again, get out and explore and take that path less traveled. It will make all the difference. Bye for now.